Your focus is going to depend on what your goal is. Uh, if you're going to do an early war strategy, like invading anyone before 1939-1940, then you don't really have to remilitarize the Rhineland because the minute you go to war, you're going to be able to just bypass this focus anyway. So you don't have to worry about it. Maybe you want to focus on building up your industry and getting that research slot. Uh, maybe you're going to want to focus on trying to stack the experience so that you can get land doctrines really easily and start researching the armor and the armored uh, vehicles, mechanized vehicles, things like that. Uh, or you could do what I do, the German Navy. Why focus on the German Navy? Well, these two focuses are half of what a normal focus is, 70 days. So in 70 days, you can get five free dockyards. That's a capital ship worth of dockyards. Okay. It also gives you 25 naval experience, which lets you uh, build some of these ships that I just created. And in another 70 days, you can get an additional four dockyards. Um, or you can go down and get two dockyards and some naval experience uh, for the U-boat and get your uh, submarine hull three a lot faster because of the 100% research bonus. So there's a lot you can do with the Navy. Don't forget that this is here. Um, this is some pretty sweet stuff, especially since you start so far behind in Navy numbers. A lot of people are probably going to be screaming at me right now thinking this is the dumbest thing that you can possibly do because you need factories and you need research and blah 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 blah. But, well, like I said, depends on what your strategy is. If you're going to do an early war and you're going to invade somebody in 1936, you're going to get factories from that. So why not build the Navy? Get yourself ready to repel the British Navy. For research, uh, the first couple are pretty much a given. You want the machine tools, and you want the construction, and you of course always want your electronic uh, mechanical engineering, and this is gonna boost your research speed, your construction speed, and your efficiency in production. But what do you do with that last slot? This is a hotly debated topic. What do you do with your last slot. I know one guy I've seen who uh, just goes straight here. 1,087 days, a four-year penalty. There are a couple ways you could do this. You could uh, get your smoke generator because pretty soon if you go through the focuses, it's going to give you a hundred percent bonus on anything in this block and you don't want to accidentally spend it on that. So if you research this now, that avoids having to waste it on that and you can go somewhere else jump on here and start working on getting your improved small cannon because you might want that for your tanks and uh, the of course the 15 and 10 percent bonuses that you can get for your existing artillery unit some people uh, jump down here get logistics right away or military police right away you're not gonna have enough support equipment in 1936 for either of these to matter uh, so that's not really anything that is super super important if you like to build scout planes that might be something you do first because you can always devote one factory to scout planes early on get that production efficiency up so high and, and get a stockpile of scout planes or you can start looking into getting those marines uh, there's really a lot of good answers here there's no one thing that i do it really just depends on my mood uh, another thing that i have done quite a lot recently this might be the new favorite thing depending on how they start doing things with armor is that right there because once you get a little bit of experience you can start designing tanks you're going to want welded armor early setup for germany's navy the first thing i tend to do I know a lot of people do this, some people are, are annoyed when you do it, but you merge together all of your surface ships, you merge together all of your uh, submarines, and you wind up with a surface ship leader. And I'm a big fan of Bohm here because he does not have the annoying naval anti-aircraft penalty. He has this uh, amazing little retreat decision bonus. Uh, I know some people are annoyed by this because it gives less damage to the enemy, but uh, I'm more about making sure that my fleet doesn't sink because I'm Germany and I have to fight against England and France and America and I would rather not have my fleet sink. Sub guy, Donitz, all the time, every day, everybody knows that. Alright, 
But what do you do about the ships themselves? Now, I do have the mod on that allows for uh, free ship design because I really hate the way ship design works in the base game, and I just always, always prefer to design my own ships. So what kind of ships do you want to build if you're Germany? Well, everybody always says submarines, submarines, submarines. But I tend to think broader than that. I know that submarines are very powerful, especially once you get to the uh, level 3 hulls, and I do start stepping up production of subs at that point. But uh, you're going to waste a lot of manpower in sunken level 2 subs. And there are some other ways you could use that manpower. You need to worry about protecting your own coastline. And a cheap way to do that is with mines. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build uh, what they should already have in the game and don't. I'm going to build a little, a little speedboat kind of a thing here. And it's going to... Actually, I don't need the engine 2. I just need engine 1. I forgot about that. Uh, engine 1. It forces you to put a gun on here, so just buy the stupid gun. And mine rails. That's it. Basically all you need. Now if you want to get a little more out of this design, you could theoretically um, give it some anti-submarine. Uh, you could give it a very basic anti-aircraft defense ability. Um, you could even give it some torpedoes. Um, to give it some ability to punch back um, and you could give it the ability to detect uh, submarines but if you do that you keep adding to the cost and the whole point is to have a, a cheap easy to build uh, ship that essentially isn't going to do anything except lay mines so you could either build it for 670 as the minimum or you can add almost 20 percent uh, or so to the cost 870 and put some weapons on here um, Your call on how you want to do that. I guess uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it this way just so I don't have to click the buttons again So if you've got a ship like this the problem is it's not going to live very long if it encounters any kind of enemy ship at all and so that is why you might give it a little friend the Kriegs fish cutter armed fishing boat and the Vorpostenboot flak boat, also called the outpost boat, uh, these two ships would be used to primarily shoot down airplanes, hunt down submarines, and provide coastal defense uh, support to all the other coastal defense ships and coastal areas. I also have the uh, expanded, uh, man the guns expanded, I think it's called, which gives me these little downgrade options that cut my production but also cut my hit points and my reliability uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna downgrade my hull and I'm gonna keep the little engine it forces you to put a gun on so I'm just gonna put a tiny little gun on this thing uh, I'm going to give myself the ability to detect submarines in case they're trying to hunt in my home waters I'm gonna give myself the ability to sink subs we're going to put some mine laying rails on there because that's what this is gonna be it's a mine ship just like the destroyers uh, it's going to have the ability to shoot down airplanes. And if you wanted to, you could even give it torpedo launchers. All right? The difference between 1 and 2 is 18 points, so I'm just going to give it torpedo launcher 2. Germany also has a problem with resources and with the lack of production capability. So we're not going to try to build a lot of expensive heavy battleships. So instead, we're going to start with cruisers. Eventually, we're going to have radar, so we're not going to need float planes. And one of the biggest things you're going to need is anti-air. Technically speaking, don't really even need this torpedo tube. If you've got torpedoes everywhere else, don't need them on your cruiser. You could get yourself some extra anti-air, because you're definitely going to need that. Or you could uh, double down on this battery and get more hit points out of it. Light cruisers, you could do something uh, similar. You could take the base cruiser that already exists. Uh, eventually, you're going to want to add radar and dual purpose guns. Dual purpose guns belong on everything. Uh, but for now, just try to make the cruiser a little more survivable um, by adding some bonuses. Now, since you happen to uh, have the extra slot here, you might as well get yourself some sonar and the ability to defeat submarines. 
even though that's not the cruiser's main job. Again, don't need the torpedo tube, but you might as well, you know, uh, have something in this slot. So either uh, if you're if you're annoyed by the fact that I put tor torpedoes on here, uh, the next best would probably be the anti-air. It actually is uh, slightly more expensive, uh, but it's going to be a significant bonus to you when the British fly a thousand planes at your ships uh, to be able to shoot some of those down. So that's probably the better option is to stack this thing with AA. This destroyer model uh, upgraded a little bit with things like radar or uh, next level modules is basically what I use for pretty much the whole game. I don't bother with destroyer 3, destroyer 4 unless I really have to. Um, I just find that I like that it's cheap and cheap is good. Cheap you can build more of. Um, so we get the sonar, we get some anti-air in there, we get some torpedo in there. We have only the first basic anti-sub, but eventually you'll upgrade that. Eventually you'll stick some radar in here, and this will be a pretty potent ship. When you get the dual-purpose uh, gun here, uh, and you get the upgraded anti-submarine, you're going to be able to have anti-air, anti-ship, anti-sub, a huge torpedo number with these two racks here. This is going to be an incredibly potent uh, combat destroyer, and that's why I like, uh, I mean, look how cheap this thing is, and how powerful it already is, even before the dual-purpose guns are on here. Two different schools of thought on subs. One is get the best engine and get the crappy torpedo tubes, because they're cheaper. It's 20 bucks. That's the difference. Just go ahead and get the better tubes. Get a better attack value. It doesn't hurt. Is it changing my visibility any to have the extra tubes? No, it's not. Is it changing my speed any? No, it's not. So, why not have the better tubes? Especially since, as Germany, you have this fancy little thing over here. 10%! 10% bonus towards submarines, right there. The other thing you can do with the Navy that you definitely want to be doing getting everybody set to split off for repair and start training. Train on a loop. Just keep training, just keep training, especially if you're going to attack the Netherlands first. You're going to get this chunk of oil right here, and you're going to get this oil and rubber here, which means that you will be able to train continuously without a fuel shortage. The Air Force is pretty easy, you just want to uh, consolidate and make your squadrons whatever size that you like them. I hear they're going to change this pretty soon, but uh, for right now, I like having 12 in my transports. Uh, I like having about 50 in my various bomber wings, and I like having 100 in my fighter wings. Being divisible um, in 50s and 100s like this uh, makes it easier since your air bases are all in uh, 100s. Um, so that makes life a little easier when you're dealing with trying to stock air bases. Um, the one that doesn't really fit that pattern is having 12 in uh, your transports, um, but that is more to do with um, how many uh, points that it costs you in command power uh, to put transports out there. As Germany, one of the cool things that you get to do is participate in the situation going on in Spain, and don't forget that you can send air volunteers why isn't my diplomat there we go so when you send volunteers it gives you the option to click send air volunteers and you can fly some planes down here and you can easily get enough air experience to start upgrading your planes uh from that experience so please make sure you you don't let that opportunity go to waste. One thing that took me an embarrassingly long time to realize about air wings is that you can actually duplicate air wings rather easily, rather than having to go through this manual process of click, add, click, add, set limit, okay. Instead of doing that the entire time, you can click on an air wing and duplicate it. How the heck did I not know about that for so long? It's ridiculous. I literally just found this out. Um, that's embarrassing, I know. But that's how uh, the Air Force works.